Hey folks, welcome back. Uh, a lot of people have really serious misconceptions about Newton's third law. Uh, that idea of for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction, that statement by itself I think is misleading. But even when we start understanding that it's talking about forces, for every force there's an equal, equal and opposite force, uh, people still get these really wrong ideas, bad ideas about what Newton's third law is saying. And this is an example of a case where people have all sorts of confusion and where these misconceptions come up. So the case is that we have two, uh, two carts that are connected by a string. And then we have something pulling on one of those carts, and we're going to let those carts go from rest. And so people will say, well, you know, if Newton's third law predicts that for every force there's going to be an equal opposite force, and this cart is going to be pulling on this cart with some force, then that must mean, well, that there's an equal and opposite force. So how can the carts possibly move? If the two forces are equal and opposite, people get this idea that the, the two forces balance out. So, I mean, let's, let's just demonstrate clearly, you know, we must not have those two forces balancing each other because we have motion. So what's going on here? Well, people in that case are misconstruing Newton's third law. Newton's third law talks about uh, when one object applies a force to another object, that object applies a force back to the first object, same size and opposite directions. So when this card pulls to the right on this card, this card is pulling to the left on this card with the same size force. But those two forces can't balance each other because they're not acting on the same object. So if I pull on this card one direction or the other, that doesn't say anything about whether this card has balanced forces on it or unbalanced ones. To understand whether we have balance or unbalance uh, in forces, we need to look at the forces that act on a single object. And in this case, We've got one force that's going to be in this direction from this string, and a different force that's going to be this direction from this string. Those two forces will not be balanced. On this cart, we're not going to have any force this direction at all. Or if we ignore friction anyway, we're not going to have any force this direction. We're just going to have a force from that string pulling it this way. So that one's going to have unbalanced forces as well. So let's take a look at, at uh, what that looks like on a graph of force. So each one of these, uh, these force sensors here is going to give us a reading of what, uh, what the force looks like over time. So let's collect our data here. Okay, I'll try and keep the cords out of the way and let this thing go. And data collecting. Okay, now let's take a look at the graphs. Right now we're looking at two graphs of force versus time. The top one goes with this sensor, and the bottom one goes with this sensor. Now, not only do these two graphs hover around the same values, but we can even say that they, they match each other. Right When we have a high point on one graph, we have a high point on another graph. So we have some little fluctuations in these measurements as we have uh, these things rolling and the, the wheels aren't super uh, smooth on these things, so we see little fluctuations, but the fluctuations are even the same. So each one of those cards is applying a force to the other one that's exactly the same even when they change. Once again, we're looking at two graphs now, but different graphs. The bottom graph again shows the, uh, the force registered on this sensor right here, but the top one shows the one registered on this graph. So now we're looking at two forces that act on this one cart. We have a much larger force, about a half a newton larger, um, on the, uh, the top graph. And again, that graph represents this sensor here. So we have a larger force pulling this direction than we do going in this direction. Newton's third law doesn't say that those two forces on this one object have to be the same, but instead that these two forces are going to be the same. Now as a result then we can see this force ends up being larger than this force, so for this object we have a net force that is to the left. Over on this object we have just a single force and it's going to be to the left, so it's going to accelerate to the left as well. So even though these two forces are the same size and in opposite directions, the net force on each object individually is going to be to the left, which means we have acceleration to the left. Newton's third law certainly doesn't predict that all forces will be balanced on all objects and therefore no object can accelerate. If we're interpreting it that way, we've made a mistake. 
Thanks for watching, folks. If you learned something from this, I'd encourage you to like or share this video so other people can find this. And if you think you might learn something from my future videos, then go ahead and subscribe as well.